welcome back i'm so glad you enjoyed the first video so i'm back with the second one this is not about specifics for step one i will cover those in individual videos this is about an overview coming straight to the point the first thing that you should do is to take a date fill out the forms plan your budget and then take a date i speak budget because steps are expensive as all of us know so have that in your mind and then take a date as soon as possible because it's important to know how you should plan your curriculum along with the step preparation. Now in India, I don't know about a lot of you, but many of you ask me if you can take the exam in third year or in final year or an internship. I would say take it after third year, preferably in or after, because that is when you have had an enough, a good flavor for clinic clinics, as well as your basics are very clear. So that is an appropriate time to start the beginning of third year, start preparing for that and take it somewhere along that line. I took it in my internship, aka final year rotations, but it really is up to you. So have that timeline in your mind that you want to factor in whatever you're reading at that point of time, along with what you have to read for step one. Once you have that clear, it'll be easier to proceed. And the second thing that you have to do is realize what materials you would need for step one. You would surely need UWorld, you would surely need first aid. And that, there's a reason why I'm cradling this book is because it is so important. Now, I also did Kaplan QBank and the Kaplan books. I would say it depends on you, how confident you are about your own uh, knowledge. You may or may not need to refer, but I would say that I enjoyed reading Kaplan along with UWorld. It gave me a flavor for two different QBanks and I feel that is important for, you know, not becoming overconfident or settling in your comfort zone with one kind of QBank. So, Specifically to say you world, Kaplan QBank, Kaplan Books, your own subject wise book and first aid, of course. So then strategy. Most importantly, do not freak out about scores. I know there are a lot of you who ask me what is an ideal score and how do we go around getting to 60s to 70s. It really is your call. Have a target, have a target as high as you want but do not freak out about it. It's not the end of the world if you score less. And I'm nobody to say what a less or a high is, but it is up to you. And then I would say, when you're taking you world, go according to how it is in first aid, because that's what I did. I would, I would do the general pathology, pharmacology and microbiology separately, but then I went system-wise, cardiovascular system, neurological system. This is one kind of study that I always enjoyed doing, even in my medical school, because we weren't taught this way. We were taught, like in first year, we did only anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Second year was specific pathology, pharmacology. I felt that in my final year, I had to go back, dig in, and then figure out, and then put together the jigsaw pieces. So it's kind of nice that first year does it for you upfront. And I would suggest going according to that, but it really depends on how you want it. But I would say that that works out best for me because it helps you form connections, retain longer and not just for your exam, but forever. Now, I would say an important thing that I realized with steps is that if you know the right answer, bravo. If you do not, then the next best thing to do is to find out what would be the most likely incorrect answer. That is to say that if somebody had, that there's a question which has an obvious correct answer, fair enough. But if you're confused between two options, then you are in safe waters if you go for the one that most of the people would mark. Somehow that would not affect your score as much as, as marking an answer which you think is rare and could be correct. Well, you could be right and you would score even higher if you're right. But if you're wrong, you would be in that 10%, 20% zone where only that small numbers have answered that question. So I would say that to start off, uh, go subject wise, go how it is to in first aid, figure out what best way is to mark your answer so that you are constantly improving in your U World Q bank. That if you have started with, uh, with your scores in 40s, your scale should always be looking up and you should go up from 40s to 50s to 80s and so on and so forth. And then try and integrate your existing knowledge base with the one in U World or first aid. It is very important that you have all of them in one place because a month before the exam, you want to revise everything. So the best way to do it is to have it all together. I will do more specific videos, like I said. So that's that for now. Stay tuned. Bye.